I published this circuit a few days ago. How to make the inductance of radio coils visible. This is by the way the complete proper schematic. And I had an important remark of B blood. What happens here is a ringing. I couldn't find the word for that uh, electronic effect. The coil rings and that's visible with this circuit. Anyway, I try to make on the basis of that first circuit a second circuit to test um, capacitors and that was not very easy. Uh, I did some experiments with a bridge and etc etc but I couldn't find it right but finally I found this very simple solution testing capacitors by listening. So you connect them in a, a square wave oscillator and then you listen to the sound that they produce. And of course when you connect an oscilloscope to that circuit you can uh, hear, sorry, you can make the frequency visible when you connect a uh, signal tracer or a counter you can really count the frequency that the capacitor generates in an oscillator circuit. And uh, of course it is not always very easy to make an oscillator that makes these uh, small capacitors visible. And then I mean the frequency that they can make. 10 picofarad is an extremely low capacitance value. The problems with capacitors are always on their magnitude. So the magnitude be between a 10 picofarad capacitor and say a 1 microfarad capacitor is extreme. There's another video on my YouTube channel. So this is a demonstration. I switch on now the signal tracer. And I've bridged now the test probes. They are here. Here is the wiring. And we have here a capacitor now in the middle of the screen of approximately 10 picofarad. That's an extreme low value. This is the waveform that it generates and you can hear the sound that it generates in this oscillator application. So let's listen what happens when we tune, it's a tuning capacitor, tune that capacitor. You can hear that the frequency gets higher when the capacitance gets smaller. Of course uh, every touch of my hand has an effect. So that uh, this shows the effect of the circuit. So you can even uh, discriminate capacitors in the 10 picofarad range. So let's see now what happens when we uh, connect to the probes a capacitor of 4.7 microfarad. Every touch of my hand of course will have an effect on the frequency because it's a capacitive effect of my body on the probes anyway. So this capacitor creates this frequency, the waveform, the frequency 13 Hz. So the extreme uh, magnitude between uh, 10 picofarad and 4 microfarad can be made visible and audible with the circuit and that also means that you can um, see, for instance, and hear the effects of 
tolerance is, uh, different. Two capacitors, all uh, both indicated in 1.5 microfarad, could create a different frequency, <coughs> and that means that there's tolerance, somewhat different frequency. And the heat sensitivity, when you heat up a capacitor in this circuit, you will hear that the frequency changes, and you can study in that way the, the different frequencies generated. Uh, this is a 100 picofarad, very small capacitor, shortwave, etc. And we have now frequency of 1.6 kilohertz. When I take it away, we only have here that 10 picofarad capacitor that gives out the frequency of 5.2 kilohertz. And when I shortcut the probes, you hear nothing. And that's normal. It's an oscillator. It doesn't oscillate when the probes are shortcut. So, here are some frequencies that I found with the circuit. Quite different frequencies. And of course this could be an interesting circuit. Of course it's possible to buy um, all kinds of <coughs> testers for electronic components. Like this one. This one gives you all transistors, capacitors, resistors, etc. But anyway, uh, such a circuit, in my opinion, uh, more interesting to do experiments with and find out the properties of capacitors on the basis of their the frequency that they generate. You can find the tolerances, etc. And I made here a switch that you could see in the circuit so that I can switch one capacitor between 100 nanofarad and 10 nanofarad. I found that it is not strictly necessary, but I left it this way because it's helpful. And here you can set the frequency, search for a frequency where all the capacitors do their job, generate a certain output frequency. And the whole schematic is, in fact, extremely simple. Square wave oscillator. So you can study capacitors with this circuit. And that's interesting. Other circuits only give you or could be that they give you a kind of general general overview.